Welcome back to another episode of Drafting with Mark. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to create this part using AutoCAD. This is going to be the first of a two-part series. So in the second video, I'm going to show you how to actually put a title block around this and put up the dimensions. And I like to use three different methods of putting a title block on a drawing. One is going to be a standard, the second will be an annotation option, and the last one will be in paper space. So I'm going to attempt to show you how to do that in one video, and that's going to be in the part two video. But in this video, we're just going to deal with creating this part. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to AutoCAD. All right, so once in AutoCAD, the first thing I like to do is go ahead and set up AutoCAD the way I like to draft. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the grid. This is my dynamic input and I usually have that turned on. If you want to go ahead and turn that on, you can always hit the three bars here to the right on the customization and make sure that there's a check next to the dynamic input. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn ortho on. So you got two choices here. You can either do ortho or you can use polar tracking. I'm going to use ortho. And then I'm going to show you what my running O snaps are set at. So I have the end point, the midpoint, the center, quadrant, intersection, extension, and perpendicular turned on. All right. So with those done, let's go ahead and switch over to the drafting now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle with a center radius. So I'll click here. Click my start point for it, and then I'm going to type in a radius of 40. All right, so it's going to disappear off the screen, and that's to be expected. It's just that that circle is incredibly big. I'm going to zoom the extents by selecting this button here, and now I can see that circle. All right, so next I'm going to go ahead and create the next circle I'm going to need. So I'm going to go back to circle, center radius. I'm going to touch this circle. Don't click on it. I'll click the end point. And then I'll type in the radius, which in this case is going to be 17.5. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put my other couple of circles here around. So I'm going to go to circle, center radius again. I'm going to click on this quadrant. Then I always kind of give myself a preview just by moving my mouse a little bit to see the circle. Then I'll type in 7.5. All right, so I'm going to use this circle center radius command again and this time, instead of going up and actually clicking on the icon, just hit enter on your keyboard and you can see here that it did go back to the circle command. I'm going to click on this quadrant here. Once again, I kind of move my mouse a little bit to give me a preview. And if it's the exact same size circle as your last one, just go ahead and hit enter. All right. So now that part is done. Let's go ahead and, uh, and, and put the rest of this slot on here. And I'm going to use the offset command to do that. So I'll go to offset. And now offset always ask for a distance first. So you either need to type in a distance or in this case, I'm going to select it graphically. I'm going to select this quadrant. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to click on this quadrant, which is here, right? Next thing I'm going to do is select the object I want to offset. So I'm going to select this circle. So left click here, come down and left click, then go back to that original circle that you left clicked on, left click it again, move your cursor to the inside and do a left click. Now let's take a look at trim. And then we're going to trim off these extra portions. So I'm going to trim here and then here. I'm going to trim off these arcs here. And then the two arcs I have sitting here and here. Let's go ahead and hit the escape button. And then I'm going to delete this circle. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create another circle here. And I'm going to choose circle center radius. This time I'm not going to left click on this circle. I'm just going to touch that bigger circle. I'm, then I'm going to hover over this for a second and then I'm going to move my cursor out and you can see that I'm getting some kind of polar tracking happening here. So this is actually called O snap tracking. This one is actually controlled by your F11 key or the icon that is located here. Right? So I have my auto snap and I usually like to call it O snap tracking. Right, and you can see that here on the icon. So I'm just tracking off of this. Once I'm getting the tracking, and make sure you have that line showing, I'll go ahead and type in 82. Go ahead and hit enter. And then I need to give it the radius. In this case, it's going to be 32. All right. Next, let's go ahead and put our smaller circle on the inside of this one. So I'm going to go to circle, center radius. 
I'm just going to touch this circle, then I'll left click on this center, and then the radius is going to be 9.5. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this circle forward 28. So let's use the copy command. Select this circle, enter. Since we're moving at a distance, the base point is irrelevant. So I'm just going to click somewhere up here. As long as I'm going straight this direction, I'll type in 28, enter. All right, let's go ahead and hit the escape button. Now we're just going to draw a line from this quadrant to that quadrant. Likewise, I'm going to go back to the line command and do the exact same thing here at the bottom. I'm just going to draw a line from this quadrant to this quadrant. All right, let's escape out of that. Let's go to the trim command and then trim off these two portions. Next here is a pro tip for you. If you want to kind of speed up your, your process of creating certain things, sometimes I like to go ahead and make things into uh, a polyline or join them together. And that's, you're going to see the benefit of me doing that here in a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the modify and use the join option here. So I'll go to join. I'm just going to use a window. So one click here, kind of enclose this and then one more click. So I have all of that joined. Once I hit the enter button, you're going to see that here on my command line, it says four objects were converted into one polyline. The important thing there is the one polyline. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and create a circle. I'm going to click at this center. And then I'm going to give it a radius of 22. Now I'm just going to use this circle temporarily because I don't want to do the math of trying to figure out what's the difference between 22 and 9.5. So I'm just going to use this as strictly a reference. Now I'm going to go to the offset command. Once again, it's asking me to set a distance. I'm going to select this quadrant, then I'm going to come down to this endpoint. So that's going to be my distance. Now I'm going to select this object here. And remember, this is the object that I joined. And then I'll click out here. All right, let's go ahead and hit the escape button. And then this circle that I used before, I can now erase it. So I don't need that circle anymore. Let's draw a line. I can shift. So I'm holding down the shift button and doing, doing a right click and selecting tangent. So I'm going to go from the tangent here, shift right click again, to the tangent of this part. All right. Next, let's go ahead and put a fillet right in between here. And this has a radius of 30. So let's go to fillet. Go down to radius. Type in your radius, which in our case is going to be 30. Then select where you want that fillet to go. So I'm going to click here and then here. Next, I'm going to use the mirror command. So I'm going to go to mirror, select this line and this line, enter. And now I just need any center along here. So I'm just going to go to the center here. So that center. And I can go to this quadrant or even this center. So I'll left click here. And then I need to answer the question, do I want to erase the source? 90% of the time, I just hit enter. And that's what I need. All right. Now we have all of this, we just need to do some cleaning work here. So I'm just going to go back to the trim command. And let's go ahead and trim off this portion here. And then here. And then we're just going to kind of walk my way around here. So I'm just going to trim this part, this one, this one here, and then finally that little piece. All right, so I'm going to look the drawing over and make sure that I covered everything on it. And it looks like everything is completed on this one. So. If you liked watching this video, please feel free to like, share, and comment at the bottom. Remember that the part two of this is going to be actually me putting a title block around this and go ahead and putting dimensions and things of that nature on it. So I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to make a really simple title block. So be prepared and stay tuned for part two of this. All right. So thank you for watching.